Hi folks, uh, today we're going to uh, go through the installation uh, procedure on uh, installing the Rasmussen Fox Renton Coil Spring Suspension Package. We're starting with the uh, skid out of the sled, uh, have it here on the bench and ready to go. And, and to start with, we will pull the <coughs> wheels off and pull the existing springs off. I've pre-loosened some of the hardware to make it a little easier. So now we have the uh, springs removed and the tensions relieved from the shock, so we'll go ahead and pull the shock off. On uh, this one, the, <clears throat> there's a little trick where this bushing needs to slide out to get the shock removed. And you can kind of just leave the bolt in place, pull the shock out, and set it aside. <clears throat> the new uh, Fox shock comes pre valved and uh, ready for. Uh, and calibrated for the uh, spring package that we're using. It's just a matter of lining up the shock to get the bushing to slide in. Will uh, the old uh, the old spring slider blocks will be discarded? And we will install the rent and coil slider block. It'll be mounted in this area. And I have uh, made a template. We'll use one of the old one of the old bolts to locate the template in the uh, uh, factory location, factory hole. And then we'll go ahead and mark the uh, the new hole location with the center punch. I always like to start with a pilot hole. Then we'll drill this hole to a 3 8 The uh, new slider block is mounted with stainless steel hardware. Go ahead and put the bushing, the spacer bushing on. Okay, that should do that. You don't want to over tighten this because we want it to be able to uh, uh, move uh, just a, with a little bit of effort. This is the uh, adjuster cam and we'll install this in the factory uh, mounting hole for the where we removed the uh, previous slider block from. So we put uh, the, the stainless steel bolt with a washer, the slider block, and the spacer, and then put the other washer on the back of the rail. And we'll go ahead and tighten this. Um, and it needs to be snug enough so that it won't uh, rotate after we get it uh, installed. When this is tightened up, then the uh, slider block will come down and rest on it and you have some adjustability here. Uh, if you want to control, have more control of ski lift, you're going to want to put it on the higher setting. 
and this will keep your ski lift uh, uh, controlled and lower to the snow. If you want more ski lift, you can adjust it to this position here. Okay, so we had a, an interference problem with our uh, block and the end of that bolt. So I just cut uh, about <clears throat> three threads off the end of the bolt and I'll, uh, because I've shortened the bolt, I'm going to put just a little bit of Loctite on the nut. Just takes a drop. <clears throat> And then we'll reinstall this without the washer, and that'll give us the uh, clearance that we need for our block. As you can see, it's still close, but uh, it moves freely and will be just fine. Uh, all the new uh, rent and coil spring uh, springs so the the spring tail slides into the uh, slider block like so <clears throat> and then I don't uh, like to um, install this, uh, put the tension on the spring until I get the other side done. Uh, there's a couple ways you can do it. I have a T-bar tool that I can hook onto the spring leg and pull it up over this adjuster block. Um, alternate, alternatively, you can and you can hook this over the block and then uh, install your bolt on the slider block portion. This uh, uh, rear torsion spring is a 18 inch pound per degree spring as opposed to the factory spring at 10 inch pounds per degree so it's nearly twice the capacity but you can see that <clears throat> this has a shorter tail on it uh, by about 3 inches or so and this is part of the reason why this package uh, does what we um, say it will because um, initially, initially your leverage point is out here uh, where there's more leverage and that gives you an, an initial softer uh, ride in and then as the suspension collapses you'll see that the uh, spring leverage point changes from the, the front to the back. Uh, there's not as much leverage here so uh, when it hits this, when it makes contact at this point, then um, it's going to uh, control your transfer and, and prevent the skis from lifting too high. So at this point, we'll go ahead and <coughs> loosen our limiter strap. Um, the way these sleds come from the factory, uh, there's two more holes. And I prefer to let my, when I put this back together, to uh, let the limiter strap length out to the next hole. And what this does is it allows the skid frame to fall out a little further. And when I'm uh, traversing a hillside on my edge, the skid frame will fall out and uh, uh, help to balance me when I'm uh, traversing the side hill. The sled doesn't want to fall back down quite as easily. Now that the tension's off the uh, spring on the front shock, we'll go ahead and remove this.
And this is the uh, factory shock, of course. We'll go ahead <coughs> and uh, pull our uh, Rasmussen Fox rent spring uh, shock assembly out. Uh, it'll come to you pre-assembled, so you don't have to worry about getting the spacers in the right place. Uh, we'll go over the adjustment momentarily. But first we'll uh, <coughs> go ahead and install it into the uh, skid frame. There's two little washers that go, one on each side of the inside of the slide rail that sometimes is a bit of a challenge, <coughs> but we'll, uh, we can work them in. Good snug fit with the bushings there. Now we have the uh, shock installed, shock spring assembly installed, so we can go ahead and uh, reinstall the, the uh, limiter strap. And we, of course, want to use uh, the next hole that was in it, so it's a matter of just compressing it a little bit, lining up the hole. <coughs> Hardware to hold it in place. Now then, this is the time to uh, adjust the shock properly. And we want very little preload uh, on this spring. So um, I'm going to back it off. And you can see right here that um, it's got... Um, little to no preload. Uh, this yellow spring is going to collapse a little bit um, when, I, <clears throat> when I pull up on it with uh, just a few pounds of tension with my fingers. And my goal here is just to have enough tension on the spring that the, uh, that'll, will hold the spring retainer in place. I'll just snug that up just a, just a bit. And <clears throat> at this point I need to make sure and lock this uh, locking collar. If I don't, the uh, uh, adjustment won't hold. So now I've got that locked and you see the way this this works is it'll collapse uh, initially um, the yellow softer spring will collapse to a point and what that does is it allows the suspension to work and to actually collapse and and uh, drive up on top of the snow when you're in soft powder snow. Uh, the main spring is a 140, 400 pound progressive spring so it starts at 140 pounds and and finishes at 400 pounds and <clears throat> uh, it's got a lot more capacity than the factory spring and when you're um, uh, slamming a uh, trail with uh, moguls. When you case the mogul with the spring, you're most likely not going to uh, go through this suspension. Uh, the, <clears throat> this pretty much completes the installation of the package, as you can see, but we're going to have an interference issue at this point, so we need to move the ice scratchers forward. Go ahead and unhook those. I've pre-loosened these, so I'll just pull that out of the way and get this 